Welcome and thank you all for coming. Uh, my task in these evenings is to frame the debate. And uh, in this particular case, I want to start by quoting George W. Bush, who often proclaimed that Islam is a religion of peace. It's one of the few things they said with which President uh, Obama is in full agreement. And it is doubtless true that the vast majority of Muslims around the world live peacefully and do not condone violent acts. Their secular concerns are dominant, making a living, raising families, educating their children. Their religion provides spiritual comfort, a source of meaning, even transcendence to their lives. On the other hand, just today the New York Times reported that uh, Faisal Shahzad, the, New the Times Square bomber, said in court prior to sentencing, quote, brace yourselves because the war with Muslims has just begun. And certainly in the past decades, the vast majority of terrorist activity has been undertaken in the name of Islam. In some respects, Islamism resembles the totalitarian movements of the first half of the 20th century, the ruthless use of violence in pursuit of ideology and power by Hitler, Stalin, Mao. Just as most of their victims were their own people, most victims of Islamist terror have indeed been Muslims. But history is replete with examples of violent minorities who have held sway over peace-loving majorities. Perhaps the relevant question for this evening is what the majority of Muslims believe. But perhaps it is whether Islam, viewed as an ideological force, is in direct opposition to Western interests and Western values. Should we respect Islam as a religion of peace, or should we accept Samuel Huntington's view that we are engaged in a clash of civilizations? Or might this be a false dichotomy? Can we honor our own traditions of pluralism and free exercise of religion and tolerance and accept that for the vast majority of Muslims it is indeed a religion of peace without compromising our ability to defend ourselves and our values against the ruthless few that wish us harm? Well, these are subtle and complex questions, and we've assembled an extraordinary panel of experts this evening to uh, explore them. It's now my privilege to turn the evening over to our moderator, John Donvan. But before I do so, I'd like to invite a round of applause to congratulate him on his third Emmy Award. Thank you. And I, I was going to ask for another round of applause for Robert Rosenkranz, and there it is. Welcome, everyone, to another debate from Intelligence Squared U.S. I'm John Donvan of ABC News, and once again, it is my honor to act as moderator as the four debaters you see sharing this stage with me here at the Skirball Center for the Performing Arts at New York University. Four debaters, two against two, will be debating this motion, Islam is a religion of peace. Now, this is a debate. There will be winners and losers. And you, our audience, will be acting as the judges. By the time this debate has ended, you will have been asked to vote twice, once before, and once again after the debate on where you stand on this motion. And the team that has changed the most minds will be declared our winner. So let's go to the preliminary vote. If you go to the keypads on your seat, our motion is Islam is a religion of peace. If you are for the motion, press number one. If you are against the motion, press number two. If you are undecided, press number three. You can correct any mistake just by repressing and ignore the other numbers. And we will present the results of both votes for you at the end of the evening. And that's how we will know who our winner is. So, opening round, sorry, I'm going to put it this way. Round one is opening statements by each side, seven minutes in turn, and I would like to begin by introducing our first speaker for the motion, Islam is a religion of peace. I'd like to introduce Zeba Khan, the only American on our panel and quite possibly the youngest debater ever to take part in an Intelligence Squared U.S. debate. Welcome, Zeba. I, I, I know that I first became aware of you when the Washington Post was running a reality game show to name America's next pundit. They had 1,400 entrants, and what pace place did you come in? They had 4,800 uh, entrants, actually. 4,800, and you came in? I came in second. Second. Well, 
Look where you are now. Ladies and gentlemen, Deva Khan. Thank you. I want to express my deepest gratitude to the Rose Mr. Rosencrantz and the Intelligence Squared Forum for allowing me to speak tonight alongside such well-known and far more distinguished co-panelists. This is particularly an honor for me because, let's be honest, I haven't written a book. I'm not a regular on national TV or radio. What I have is my story. I am a Muslim American woman born and raised in Toledo, Ohio by two very loving Indian Muslim parents. My sister, brother, and I were raised in a middle-class American home. We went to mosque on Sundays, attended Sunday school classes, and prayed the community prayer with our community of Pakistanis, Lebanese, and Syrian Muslims. When I was in high school, our mosque president was a woman who did not wear a headscarf. And it may come as a surprise to some of you, but for the entirety of my life, men and women have prayed side by side at our mosque, and both can enter the prayer hall in the, using the same door. My parents are both very religious people, but they express their faith in different ways. My father emphasizes the devotional, and he tends to spend his time praying and reciting the Quran, whereas my mother emphasizes a more constructive approach. She uses community service and volunteering to express hers. But what they both share is fundamental Islamic principles. First and foremost, seek knowledge. They, sent, they urge their children, all three of us, to question, to have critical minds, and to doubt. They wanted us to engage fully with our faith and to question everything. They lived out the Quranic commandment that there is no compulsion in religion, and also that God said in the Quran, I made you into many tribes so that you might know one another. And as such, they enrolled me and my siblings in a Hebrew day school for nine years, where we learned Hebrew, read the Torah, and prayed in a synagogue almost every morning. They always wanted us to learn about other faiths, and they always, made an, an, uh, they always made sure that we knew the difference, though, between Islam and Judaism. But they always made sure we also respected our Jewish sisters and brothers in faith. My story is just one of 1.5 billion stories in some 57 countries. Mo the Muslim population is one of the most diverse and eclectic in the world. We are Sunnis, we're Shias, and even in the Shia tradition, there are Zaydis, Ismailis, Ibn Ashris. There are numerous madhabs or schools of thought and Sufi mystic orders. Like Christians and Jews, Muslims can be observant, non-observant, reformist, humanist, secularist, extremist, mainstream, and there are even some Muslims who consider themselves culturally Muslim but are actually atheist. Now, the motion before you tonight is asking you to determine whether Islam is a religion of peace. And at first blush, that might seem a bit tricky to decide. After all, the Quran and the Hadith have verses in them that point to peace and, and justice and love. But there are other verses that are violence, are about violence and about violence against specific people. So how then do we reconcile these seemingly contradictory verses? How then do we decide whether Islam is a religion of peace? The only way to answer that question is to take an honest look at the people who practice the faith and how they interpret it. According to Gallup's groundbreaking study on what a billion Muslims think, 93% of Muslims around the world are peaceful, mainstream Muslims. 7% are what Gallup terms as politically radicalized. And within that 7%, there's a smaller percent that has succumbed to the use of violence. Any percent is too much, but we must remember that the violent minority of a minority are motivated by politics, not religion. As Gallup concluded, what distinguishes the politically radicalized Muslims from the mainstream Muslims is their politics, not their piety. Robert Pape, a University of Chicago political scientist, further confirmed this in his book, Dying to Win, in which he, he came to the same conclusion, that the actions of terrorists are politically motivated, not through religion.